In this video I will share with you how I built the motion platform frame and the design decisions I needed to make. The frame is made from 80mm by 40mm aluminium extrusion. I decided on the slightly more expensive heavy duty variant to ensure that the frame didn't flex under load. Heavy duty simply means that the internal profile uses more aluminium resulting in greater rigidity. The total cost was 802 Australian, which included the cutting, brackets, end caps, inserts, bolts and nuts. I purchased all the aluminium from a local supplier and picked it up rather than pay extra for postage. The heavy duty profile is considerably heavier than the standard extrusion. I already had two Monster Tech clamps which I had used previously for clamping the Thrustmaster Warthog to my study desk. These really helped solve some of the design challenges concerning the mounting of the joysticks as you will see. The only parts left over were the actual clamps themselves. However, they were very expensive to ship to Australia. $380. That included €55 Euros for shipping. I set myself a constraint of 1200mm long and 600mm wide for the frame. The first step was to explore how the frame fitted together and get some ideas for where the major parts would go in relation to each other. The seat, the pedals and the wheel. I spent many weeks trying out ideas and taking measurements. Everything is bolted together using right angle brackets and bolts. This is the leftover Monster Tech clamp. I tackled the joystick, HOTUS, shifter and SciTech TPM mounting first. The Monster Tech clamp plates and the adapters came in handy and provided a neat solution for all the peripherals. The next goal was to figure out how to mount the SciTech Pro pedals and the Husink Veld Sprint pedals so that they could be swapped easily. I tried mounting them to plywood but this looked terrible and didn't work. But it all came together when I found a scrap piece of 10mm aluminium plate at work. It was strong enough for the pedals and the heel rest and could easily be bolted to the 80x40 frame. The racing pedals are bolted to the plate using M3 bolts with the SciTech pedals held in place using two self-tapping screws and two brackets. It took some time to get the satisfactory angle and height for them both. The next goal was mounting the racing seat. Initially I used plywood for this, but it didn't look very good and it wasn't easy to attach the frame. In the end I bolted some brackets to the seat bolt holes and mounted them on two 40x40 40 40 rails which can be moved using spring loaded quick release levers. The last step was to figure out how I was going to mount both a heavy open sim wheel motor and a large Yoko yoke flight yoke uh, that I could switch between them easily. I decided on two gantries that could be tied together mechanically at the top. My major concern was movement backwards and forwards. However, I didn't want to use diagonal stays which looked terrible. So each upright is attached to the frame with four brackets. They're very solid. The OSW motor is bolted to its own pair of 350mm long 40x40 40 40 extrusion mounts. The yoke was attached to a plywood base. It attaches to the frame using nuts inside the frame. The actuators are attached with four brackets.
hope you found that useful and in part two I'll show you how to build the SFX100 actuators. Bye for now.